Hey, what's going on guys? Mike here from Arizona doing an unboxing video and I'm here to see what we got in. I have a salt water box sitting in front of me and a fresh water box sitting in front of me. So let's take a look and see what's inside the box. Starting to get good at doing this whole unboxing thing with the knife with one hand. So things are going pretty well here. I haven't messed up yet. So we have here our styrofoam cooler and let's see what we have if we can see any of this stuff because uh, what I've noticed with salt water items that get sent my way is that sometimes the salt water uh, fish are in black bags and just to reduce stress but let's see what we have here oh. Looks like we have a green brittle star. He's looking good. He's moving around the bag. He's a pretty cool creature. The one thing I do have to say about these guys is be careful. If you decide to get a green brittle star, these guys get very large. Um, they could technically get about 20 inches in diameter. I've had one that literally spanned across my entire 200 gallon fish tank. It's a cube which is about three feet tall and four feet wide, one pane. So uh, it literally almost took up the entire glass. But you want to be careful about with these guys. If they're not well fed, they hunt and they are unforgiving. They will hunt in the night and they will catch sleeping fish. They can catch small invertebrates. Uh, if you like something in your tank enough, uh, I would say don't get one of these because chances are this may catch it at some point and eat it and they get very big and even though most starfish are slow are slow this starfish can be very fast when it hunts it actually moves quicker than you would think so let me put this guy down and move on to the next item looks like we have a clownfish I'm not sure why this guy is by himself I did get a couple of clownfish so it's one clownfish here's another this one Let's see if he's not doing so good or what it's kind of stuck here in the corner and I'm trying to move him but there we go he seems to be a lot lot more lively now we'll see how this guy does we're gonna have to drip acclimate him and see he looks like he could be a little stressed from shipment He's stuck there in the corner. Uh, may have to report that to Seagrass Farms because he's clearly not swimming around the way the other one is. So let's put this guy down. And we'll move on to the next bag. See now here's another clownfish and this one's moving around just fine. Uh, obviously a little stressed out still from being in shipment. And these were just in the airport. They were shipped out this morning, so they haven't been a shipment too long. But he looks like he's doing okay. Uh, right here, these guys are cool. I really enjoy these guys. These are peppermint shrimp. And what these guys are known for are eating Aptasia, which is a pest anemone that can grow in your uh, aquariums. You can see, get a better look at them, see if we can get it to focus. But they'll eat these pest anemones that grow in your aquarium and sting your corals. So these guys are really good at keeping pest anemones down and pretty much eradicating them. I've completely got rid of um, Aptasia before by utilizing these guys in some of my tanks. Uh, and they're really interesting to look at. They actually uh, move around quite a bit and they are nocturnal so they do a lot more activity at nighttime. Let's see here. I don't know why they... Alright, well. And we got a bunch of damselfish in but these are uh, called Springer damsels which it's hard to really see it in the bag because it's shipped in the this methylene blue but they are bright blue and they have black spots on them really nice coloration um, people can get these uh, if they want something with a little bit of color in their tank um, what they really are good at doing 
There's one. What they are really good at doing is eating flatworms. These guys will eat flatworms off of most soft corals. Like if you happen to notice that you have flatworms on your, um, on like maybe like your pulsating zinnia or some of your corals, these guys are really good at picking pests off of corals and they're awesome. Uh, the one thing you do have to be careful about is they become very territorial. Uh, damselfish like to chase other fish and nip at them because they are territorial. So if you are going to get damselfish, just know that they need enough room and need a lot of territories within the tank that they can claim as their own because they can be fin nippers towards other fish. And it looks like I got a couple more of those. Let's see what's in this bag right here. Oh, this is um, this is a Duncan colony. However, it's closed up. It will open back up once we get in the tank. But this is a great uh, coral. It's a stony coral. It actually grows really fast if you feed it. It's a mouth feeder. It could uh, survive off of life, but it does really well if you throw food within the mouth. Uh, they actually will actively eat, and you can actually notice that they are eating stuff. And the more readily you feed them, the more they grow, which is awesome. They, uh, they're kind of a moderate coral. I wouldn't say they're a beginner coral, but they're not an advanced coral either. They can handle a lot of different types of parameters uh, as well as different types of salinity levels. They do like it on the higher end of the salinity spectrum. However, uh, I would not hesitate to get this if you are a beginner because it's a good way to transition into harder corals because this one will show you what it's like to have anything but soft corals. Got here. Oh, I wish you were able to see in this bag, but this is a long nose hawkfish, which I do not, I'm not able to see. The black is, the back is black, the bag is blacked out. I got, I'm tongue tied today. Oh, it is a pretty, I love these fish. All right, guys, so this fish is one of the biggest mistakes people make as beginners. This is a fish you really would love, however, you should stay away from. This is a green mandarin goby. These things are absolutely beautiful. The problem with them are is that they only eat live food, and it's usually the copepods and amphipods that are in your live rock. So if you have a tank that's not as big as it needs to be, so they recommend one per like 50 to 60 gallons with about 60 pounds of live rock and to be pretty much colonies of these amphipods and copepods uh, grown out for about a year. And if you don't have that, chances are they're going to eat through their entire food supply and they're going to starve to death because most of them readily do not eat frozen foods. People have trained them in the past to eat frozen, but I have had several of these and they do end up dying. I've trained them to eat brine shrimp and they've done good on that for a bit, but after a while they stop eating and then they die. So again, this is a great fish. It's a beautiful fish. However, uh, I would stay away from it because it's, bound, it's probably not going to do good uh, unless you're completely set up for it. It takes a lot of time to set up for something like that. And then the rest of these guys are just more of those blue damsel fish that I told you about. I was supposed to get a coral banded shrimp, but I don't see him in here. I might have to check the invoice to see if he was on the invoice. He's definitely not in any of these bags. At least I hope he's not because he shouldn't be packed with the rest of these. So let me put these back in the box. The only fish I'm not sure about right now is that hawkfish because I can't see in that bag. But I'm gonna have these delivered to the customer's house um, as soon as I'm done doing this unboxing and making sure everything is alive. When it comes to saltwater fish guys, I don't have a lot of room for it. So if my customers want to order saltwater, they're more than welcome to. But it's basically when I get it in that day, is basically I make sure it's alive and then I ship it to them for quarantine. Because I don't have room to quarantine these animals myself at this particular moment. So everybody's on the understanding that that's what we do with these particular fish because um, it just I just can't house them. And I, I, it's, it's something that I don't want to get into doing at this moment here in Arizona, maybe in the location of Florida, but not here in Arizona. Actually, this guy's looking much better now. But 
Really, I, this guy's really cool. I love, I love brittle stars. These guys are really cool. Give me another good look at him. Which reminds me of like a starfish, octopus kind of thing, right? Best of both worlds. If you want an octopus, but you can only get a starfish, there you go. That's the one for you. And they have all different types of brittle stars, but this one's like a green color. And you know what? I'm just going to leave him out. And I'm going to open up the other box. This box is pack a little tighter, a little tighter. Up and there comes my dog in my house, which I didn't want. But she learned how to open up doors, which is amazing. If you guys have Australian cattle dogs or Australian shepherds or border collies, you would know that these dogs actually learn how to open up doors. They should get out. Come on, go. Okay. Oh, I want to show you this real fist. Notice it's a little cloudy. This is a good example of uh, Calerpa going sexual in a tank. That means that the Calerpa is reproducing in a sexual way and releases sperm into the water and clouds it up. So I have to do a water change on this. This happened pretty much overnight and uh, I have to clean it out because it's very cloudy. I don't have an inhabitant in there yet, but I, it looked beautiful before it got cloudy. I wanted to show you guys in this video, but I can't. All right, so let's see what we got in our box here. Okay, so these are gonna be my betta fish that I've gotten for this particular order. Now here, keep pay close attention to how they are packed up. So a lot of people don't believe me when I tell them that these fish travel in less than an ounce of water. Hold on, let's get that focus. Less than an ounce of water and they still survive. And though I don't recommend that and I don't think that's right, that's how they're shipped. Even when I get them from Southeast Asia, they're shipped the exact same way. Barely enough water for them to swim. In fact, actually there is one DOA in here. That's one DOA. And we'll see if there are anything else. But I'm gonna give these guys nice new homes to hold them in. Uh, I'll, I obviously, you guys have seen this display down there. It's about three gallons per fish. I have this display up here, which has got room for a few. That's about three and a half gallons per fish. I'm gonna put one in that 20 gallon over there, one in that other 20 gallon, another one in that 20 gallon, another one in that 20 gallon. I actually have that set up with some water in there. That's, believe it or not, about four gallons right now. Maybe three and a half, four gallons. So we have plenty of room to house these guys. They're gonna go from these very small water conditions and very miserable water conditions to being in proper homes. I'm even gonna do a basic care guide and how to set up a beta tank video. And one's gonna get its own three gallon tank that's set up right there. That would probably be my next video. But as you can see, we have probably about, I'm gonna say 10 beta fish in here. And there's literally probably less than 10 ounces of water combined. But either way guys, that's my video for today. I am gonna, you guys can go on my website at greenoasisfarms.com or my eBay store to check out the new fish that I got if you'd like to purchase any of them. Uh, throw me a like, please subscribe, and uh, please throw some comments down. I'd love to hear from you guys. I'll talk to you later.